So while you're working on this, get our four standards from this unit. The first one is translating, which is what this is. That's standard one. Okay. Standard two is graphing. So we're going to finish up graphing today. Okay. So you need to know things like which way is my arrow going to point? What kind of circle am I going to put? Filled in circle or an open circle? I talked about that yesterday. Um, and then we're going to talk about the last part today. So before we do all of that, Okay, uh, there were several of us gone, so I'm gonna have to take us through a really quick recap of that, um, and then we'll move on to that level four stuff. Okay, but let's talk about this uh, trans translating section real quick. Okay, so the first part, <clears throat> translating, uh, just the symbol. So our symbol options are this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay. Just saying them out loud, this is less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Okay, so the ones that are pretty straightforward would be fewer than. Fewer than is just equal to less than. So fewer means less. So that's this one. No less. If I don't want less, that means I want more. But when it says no less than, also remember to put that line underneath. Okay, this one is greater than or equal to. So you have a greater than symbol or the equal to symbol underneath. Okay, now the other three, pick one. Pick one to memorize. Is it at least or is it at most? Pick one to memorize. And then the other one is the opposite. So at least or at most. I always do at least. Then we say, Mom, please, I want at least $20. Okay, so if you're asking, please, can I have at least $20? I want either $20 or I want more than $20. Okay, if you can get this at least correct, at most is just the opposite. If you have, um, if you have this part of your assessment, so again, you're going to get this back tomorrow. If you have this part of your assessment um, incorrect, then you're probably sitting around a, a 1.5 or a 2, okay? Just based on kind of what I've seen so far. So if you have a 1.5 or a 2, I would suggest that you reassess, which you can do the practice. You can fix those symbols. You can do the practice really quick. <coughs> And then you can reassess tomorrow if you want. Okay? So this is also, I know some of you may not particularly be paying attention right now, but you don't know if you need to reassess or not yet. So just make sure you have your feet on the wall. Minimum. I want a minimum of $20. A minimum of $20. I say a minimum. I want $20, but I want that to be the lowest possible amount I need to spend. I would really like more than that. Okay? Okay. Write this down. Again, we have this at least. At least we have that symbol up here. So that's the symbol we're going to use. Pick out the symbol. Pick out the operation. Done means plus. So that plus sign is going to go in between. And then we put it in here. The good news of the day is finally, after we have assessed these topics three to four times now, uh, we are getting the um, product placement word is going to notice that, which is really good. I don't want to just give me notes. So I'll go through that. I'm just going to use. Okay, so now second one here, we have more than. So there's my symbol. Take that symbol out. More than. Pick out the word for my operation. So my operation is product here. So product is going to go here. That symbol is going to go there. But I have a second one. So the second one is subtraction, and that subtraction sign is going to go here. So we'll go three times, and if you've got two of them, then you can get parentheses. So three times, put that parentheses on. And then Y, that subtraction symbol is going to go there. Six, and finish it off with 27.
All right. Okay. So if you were here yesterday, what I want you to do is I want you to open your binder to page seven. If you were not here yesterday, I want you to open your binder to page five. Yes, if you were not here yesterday, um, <clears throat> we need to get a little recap because there's a lot of you and we need to go over this really quick before we move on. Because <clears throat> if you were here yesterday, at page seven, you should have one through ten done. And I'd like to see that. Um, and then also, if you were here yesterday, I'd like to give you this little um, practice on what we were doing up here. <clears throat> and then if you're done, I'd like to go through that page five with you. Okay, so binder page seven or binder page five, depending on um, if you were here or not. Okay, so if you were here yesterday, um, you're in your page seven, you're one through ten, that's what you're looking at here. Um, I'm going to scan around and get that for you in just a minute. If you're on page five, page five looks like this. So we're going to do this little thing here. Fill out this chart here if you were gone. So we got to fill out this VIN form and you've got to fill out these chart forms here if you were gone. So I'm going to put that chart there and I'll pass these um, papers out to those of you who are here. And then I'll like, explain it to those of you who were gone. Okay, so. If you were gone, there's our chart that we need to fill out. And then I'll go over that in just a second. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, so those of you um, who are were here yesterday and you have your notes done, you're just working on uh, matching for the translating. So we're going to go over that in just a minute. So if you're done with one through ten, jump to the uh, matching bracket. Which again helps you be ready for tomorrow if you need to be assessed. It can be counted as you practice. If you need to be assessed, you can do this once or twice as you practice.
This is going to be kind of backwards a little bit, um, but if you're still working on that multiple choice, keep working on those. I'll tell you those answers here in just a minute. But you can also check up here to check to make sure that your page seven was done correctly. Okay? So page seven, you can write this. Okay, so this is what we do. First thing we do is we put the number that we see on the graph. Okay, so this negative two, I'm going to put right in the middle of the graph. So that's the one that I'm going to do. The second thing we do is figure out what kind of circle we need. There's two kinds of circles. There are open circles and closed circles. Right here, because there's no line underneath, it's going to be an open circle. So this symbol and this symbol are open circles, whereas this one and this one, you'll put a filled in circle. Okay. So this one's going to be an open circle. I like to put it above the line because I don't want to put it right over top of that circle. And then the third piece of this is the arrow. Okay. So should the arrow go point to the right or should it point to the left? Hmm? Because that's the left piece, right? So all the numbers left and right. Done. Not so bad, right? Okay. So then, if there is a line underneath, we'll call them in on the filled in circle. So we'll put that number nine right in the middle of the graph. This is going to be a filled in circle because of the line underneath. And then, should it go right or left? Reach forward, right? Okay, now, if you have, so that's a level one, okay? Level two jumps up here to where you see how it's not the letter first. The letter needs to be first in order to figure out what each of the arrows are. Okay, so I'm going to put the letter first. I'm going to switch to the number second, okay? But when I flip the order, I've got to flip the sign. The sign still has to point at the same thing, so here it's pointing at the Y, so it's still got to point at the Y. So this is what we're asked to benefit, not this. Okay, so we put that negative four right in the middle. We fill in a dot because of the line underneath. And our arrow can be placed. Let's do one more just to make sure. So the two and the seven, I got these. So if I put the two first, put the seven second, the two should be, the symbol should be opening up to the two. Okay? Then <clears throat> I put the seven right in the middle. This is going to be an open circle because it doesn't have the line underneath. And then which way should the arrow go, right or left? This time it's going to go to the right. Yep. Okay. One more. One more type. That's your level two. Level three. So take a second. <clears throat> you should be looking at your page seven. Open that up to your page seven. Check your page seven with these four pages. If you already have them done, these four, check them out. Number one, number two, number five, and number six. One, two, five, and six. Check your answers for one, two, five, and six. Okay, the second thing I want you to check while you're checking this, so one, two, five, and six, make sure your graphs look like that. I checked to make sure we have them done, but we need them to be done correctly. Okay, so one, two, five, and six. Okay, now let's talk one more time about seven and nine. Okay, so I saw most of you had these correct, but let's just make sure for seven and nine. Let's talk about those together. We said yesterday, and if it says four, you are just putting two things on one graph. So for number seven, you should have the number four 
five, six, seven. I'm going to write all of those numbers down. So I go four, five, six, and seven. So we're doing this one right here. Four, five, six, and seven. So we have a four and a seven. Both of them have to get on the graph. Okay. We're going to do open circles for both of them because there's not lines underneath. So open circles for both. An open circle at four and an open circle at seven. Yesterday we said or graphs should point in or out. Look down at yours. Which ones do they do? Do they point in or do they point out? Out. They point out. So if you see or, they should point out. But even if you don't know that, this one says less than. So that points this way. This one says greater than. So that points this way. This is compound inequality, which just means there's two arrows on one graph. So number seven. So number seven looks like that. Okay, one more time, number nine. <clears throat> so number nine, this particular situation is an in-between situation. So between. Okay, so what this is saying is y is independent negative five and negative one. So negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. I just put the number on there to make sure I get some numbers on the graph. This time you should have two filled in circles. One at negative five. Now, if you just follow the arrows that you currently see here and here, you would have two arrows pointing in the same direction. Is that okay? Nope. You should never have two arrows pointing in the same direction. And the reason is, this is not in proper form. The letter needs to come first, not the number. So this arrow is actually not going to be pointing that way. These are in between graphs, so they should be pointing in. Okay, now we've got to figure out, real quick, we've got to figure out these last six. Okay, so before we do that, I'm going to just show you real quick. Check your multiple choice. Did you write that? That's B, C, A, F, B, E. How'd you do? B, C, A, F, B, E. Now, you're going to keep this because if you need to, this can count as your practice for your test. Okay? If you're going to read a test tomorrow, this can count as your practice, so keep that uh, tied that into your binder. Okay? Okay. And then we're going to log back and forth today. Well, let's jump over to page six. At page six. Page six, example four. So this is the new stuff for today. <clears throat> this is your level four, and this assessment is going to happen tomorrow. Oh, the quick turnaround. But these first two sections, these first two standards are very small, so it doesn't take us very long. The next standard is going to take us about a week and a half um, to take care of instead of like two days. Okay, so here's the process. We are going to write the inequality. So here's what you're going to do first. First thing you're going to do, step one, you're going to write a letter. So pick one. Oh, I'm going to do K, because my first name starts with K. Fine. I'm going to do B for Fozzie Bird. Great. I'm going to do X, because I'm going to use X every time. Still fine. Pick a letter. X. Okay. Then, write the number. where the circle is. Where's that circle at? Because that's your number that's going to go in the problem. So here, my circle is at 1. And if it's not at a specific tick mark, okay, if it's not at a tick mark here, all right, then they're going to tell you what the decimal is. They're going to tell you right there. That's going to tell you. Okay, so here it's at 1. Okay, so you write your X, you write your letter, you write your number. Boom. Now we've got to figure out the symbol, okay? So, <clears throat> when we figure out the symbol, the symbol is as easy as drawing the arrow on the end of this graph. Check this out, you ready? This is what I mean by this. See this arrow right here? If I trace over that arrow, that's the 
symbol that you need to use. Ta-da! Okay, it's also, because it's to the left, it's a left hand. So there's two ways to figure it out. Way number one is that you can uh, twist the arrow. Okay, so figure out the symbol. I'm going to put either a straight arrow. Or you can think of, if it goes to the left, Whichever one works for you. Is it easier to think less is less? Or is it easier to just trace over that arrow tip? Okay, so the arrow is going to go. Okay, the last thing you need to ask yourself is, should I put a line underneath? Does this one require a line underneath? Nope, because it's an open circle. So the last thing is, should there be a line? Okay. I'm going to write here just in case you need it. Should there be a line? Open equals no. Close equals yes. Okay, so just in case you don't remember that from yesterday, hopefully you do, but in case you don't, or maybe you weren't here, those are the two things that you need to know uh, about the circle. If the circle is open, that means we do not put that line underneath. If it is closed, we do put the line underneath. Okay, so this one is. Let's put the symbol. So every time you come to these problems, put the letter, put the symbol. Boom. Put the letter, put the symbol. Okay. Then, sorry, put the letter, put the number. Oh, I said symbol. Put the letter, put the number. The end of the arrow, that tells you which symbol to be using. Should I put a line? Yes or no? No, you've got this. You've got this one. That's what you need. So if we put back to that page seven, just turn that one more page over. This page one through sixteen should be done before we figure it out. Okay? If it's not, okay, then this part of the reassessment process where you have to redo binder pages, this is the page that you'll have to do before any reassessment can happen on this one. Okay? Same thing because on page seven. If you want to reassess, you need to reassess uh, the first standard. Page three needs to be done completely uh, if you want to reassess that standard. Okay? So as we move to our new standard, <clears throat> these binder pages need to be done before any reassessment can happen. Okay? okay, so we're just getting ourselves prepared. You've got more than 10 minutes. Make sure this page is fully completed, and then you've got a little bit of time after that. 